How do you kill stuff in Doom? Well, with weapons of course. Doom 2 has a roster of 9 different weapons, each with their own purpose and importance. Before we go and check out each weapon individually, let's take a look at how weapons and ammo work in general. Each weapon uses the same template of states. These states are the weapon raising state, it runs when you start the new level, grab a new weapon, or switch to a different one. The weapon lowering state, runs when you switch weapons, or when you die. The weapon ready state, when your weapon is fully raised, it is ready for action. This action is either firing the gun, or switching to a new one. The weapon attack state, this one speaks for itself. The weapon flash state, the muzzle flash that appears along with the world around you lighting up. The cool thing is that you can queue up your next action in between each state. Let's say you pull the trigger and immediately switch weapons. The game queues up your decision and will switch the weapon the moment the gun is done firing and ready for use. Another example is picking up a berserk pack. Picking one up force switches you to the fist. But if you queue up a weapon switch while your gun is lowering, your pending weapon will be overwritten to the one you chose. When you pick up a weapon, it will appear in your inventory. If you didn't own this weapon before, you will automatically switch to it and Doomguy will grin menacingly. Along with the weapon, you also acquire some ammo for it. If this is a weapon placed by the map maker, you'll get 20 bullets for grabbing a chain gun, 8 shells for grabbing a shotgun or super shotgun, 2 rockets for grabbing a rocket launcher, 40 cells for grabbing a plasma rifle or BFG. Some enemies drop weapons, like shotgunners and chain gunners. Dropped weapon ammo yields halved, so you get 10 bullets for grabbing a chain gun and 4 shells for a shotgun. When playing deathmatch, the ammo for weapon pickups is greatly increased. 50 bullets for grabbing a chain gun, 20 shells for grabbing a shotgun or super shotgun, 5 rockets for grabbing a rocket launcher, 100 cells for grabbing a plasma rifle or BFG. Weapons in deathmatch also don't disappear when picked up, but can be grabbed again if you already own the weapon. There are also of course ammo pickups. An ammo clip, yes, I know it's a magazine, I'm also cringing, gives 10 bullets for the pistol and chain gun. A box of ammo gives 50 bullets. Shotgun shells provide 4 shells for the shotgun and super shotgun. A box of shells gives 20. A rocket gives, well, 1 rocket for the rocket launcher. A box of rockets gives 5. An energy cell gives 20 cells for the plasma rifle and BFG. An energy cell pack gives 100. It is worth noting that on the I am too young to die and nightmare difficulties, these pickup values are doubled. If you can't carry any more of a certain ammo type, you can pick it up. A backpack can double your ammo capacity however. Max bullets capacity goes from 200 to 400. Max shells goes from 50 to 100. Max rockets also from 50 to 100. And max cells goes from 300 to 600. The backpack itself also provides a little bit of ammo. 10 bullets, 4 shells, 1 rocket and 20 cells. Ammo is placed by the map maker or dropped by Zombie Man and Wolfenstein SS. They drop an ammo clip upon death. What happens when your weapon runs out of ammo? Then it will automatically switch to a new one. You must of course own this weapon and have ammo for it. The game has a specific preference which weapon it will choose, from most favorable to least favorable. Plasma rifle, super shotgun, chain gun, shotgun, pistol, chainsaw, rocket launcher, BFG, fist. The game also likes to automatically switch weapons if you pick up ammo for a weapon that is completely depleted. If you have your fist out and pick up ammo for an empty chain gun, then you automatically switch to the chain gun. Don't own a chain gun? Then switch to the pistol instead. Same with the shotgun, but here it checks both your fist and pistol. Interestingly, if you own a super shotgun, but not a shotgun, then the game won't switch weapons. Oversight? I think so. Rocket launcher. Out of rocket ammo and got your fist out, picking up a rocket will then cause an auto switch. With the plasma rifle, it checks if your fist is out. Picking up cells for an empty plasma rifle, then auto switch. Interestingly, just like the super shotgun, it doesn't check if you have a BFG. There are two special cases where the weapon is considered depleted even when the ammo is not zero. The first one is the super shotgun, which requires two shells. Having only one shell will cause an auto switch. Same with the BFG, any number below 40 cells will cause an auto switch. Alright, enough about that, let's check out those guns. The pistol. This is a standard weapon you always start with. Damage, 5 to 15 damage in multiples of 5. Rate of fire, 150 shots per minute. Range, 2048 map units. Ammo type, bullets. Weapon slot, 2. The maximum horizontal bullet spread angle is about 5.6 degrees. 
but the first shot is always 100% accurate. At the end of its firing animation, a refire function is called. What this function does is check if you've still got the attack button held down. If yes, then immediately fire weapon again. What it also does is increment the player's refire value by 1. This refire value is used to make your following pistol shots inaccurate. However, if you don't hold down the attack button during this refire check, then your refire value is reset back to 0. As long as it's 0, your shot will have 100% accuracy. This means if you tap your attack key, you'll skip over the refire check and the refire value is never incremented, and all your shots will have no spread whatsoever. The Fist, another weapon you always start with. Damage, 2 to 20 damage in multiples of 2. Rate of fire, around 124 hits per minute. Range, 64 map units. Ammo type, none. Weapon slot, 1. The Fist uses the same maximum horizontal spread as the pistol, 5.6 degrees. After hitting a target, your player's angle will turn to where you've landed your punch. This is why your camera keeps bouncing around after punching something. The fist turns into an absolute powerhouse after grabbing a berserk pack. Going berserk multiplies your damage by 10 and will last until the end of the level. Or almost 4 years of real time if you want to be really specific. The chainsaw is the second melee weapon you can find in Doom. Damage 2 to 20 damage in multiples of 2. Rate of fire 525 hits per minute. Range, 65 map units. Ammo type, none. Weapon slot, 1. The chainsaw works exactly like the punch. Same damage, same maximum horizontal spread of 5.6 degrees, and same lock-on mechanics. It's got some minor differences though. While the most obvious one is the rate of fire, the rage is also one map unit longer. What gives? The reason is pretty silly. The function that spawns bullet poofs when hitting a wall with a pistol or fist checks the range of the attack. If it's within melee range, then skip the first bullet proof frame where a spark is produced. And since chainsawing a wall will undoubtedly create sparks, a value of one unit beyond melee range was chosen to create sparks. Another thing unique to the chainsaw is that the player will be pulled towards the target every successful hit. Keep note that you can't switch back to the fist anymore after grabbing a chainsaw unless you grab the berserk back. Then you can toggle between the chainsaw and the berserked fist by pressing 1. The shotgun, the workhorse of doom can take down a bunch of hit scanners, one hit kill imps, and just deal solid damage overall. You can even snipe with it. It fires 7 pellets per shot. Damage per pellet, 5 to 15 damage in multiples of 5, up to a total of 105 damage. Rate of fire, 57 shots per minute. Range, 2048 map units. Ammo type, shells. Weapon slot, 3. Because of how Doom's RNG works, a maximum damage of 105 cannot be achieved. This is because of how the RNG table is designed. There's never a situation where a sequence of 7 RNG table values add up to 105 damage. The max you can truly get is 100. Each pellet shot has the same maximum horizontal spread of 5.6 degrees, just like the pistol. Contrary to popular belief, the shotgun has no vertical spread. Wait, did I call the shotgun the workers of doom? Check this baby out, the super shotgun. It can take down pretty much everything, even cyber demons. It fires 20 pellets per shot and consumes 2 shells. Damage per pellet, 5 to 15 damage in multiples of 5, up to a total of 300 damage. Rate of fire, 37 shots per minute. Range, 2048 map units. Ammo type, shells. Weapon slot, 3. Just like the shotgun, because of how the RNG table is set up, a damage value of 300 is impossible to achieve. The true max damage is 225. Each pallet's maximum horizontal spread is 11 degrees. Unique to the super shotgun is the added vertical spread. That maximum vertical spread is around 7.1 degrees. The super shotgun is also a bit buggy. First of all, when you pick up a super shotgun without having a shotgun in your inventory, the weapon slot digit won't light up in your status bar. The muzzle flash is also messed up. The firing frame lasts 7 ticks, but the muzzle flash lasts for 9 ticks. This means the muzzle flash lingers on for 2 ticks more and briefly bleeds over to the next weapon frame. You can easily spot it when playing it in slow motion, but the more you look at it on regular speed, the more you'll notice it. Don't stare at it for too long. Also unique to the super shotgun is a reload check of the firing. Before doing the brilliant reloading animation, the game checks if you have 2 shells. If not, you'll switch weapons. For whatever reason this check is skipped in the boom compatibility level, so you'll reload the gun with 2 non-existent shells and then automatically switch out. I mean, what? To toggle between the shotgun and super shotgun, you need to press the 3 key again. The chain gun. It's a pistol, but with a faster firing rate. 
Damage, 5 to 15 damage in multiples of 5. Rate of fire, 525 shots per minute. Range, 2048 map units. Ammo type, bullets. Weapon slot, 4. Yeah, exactly the same as the pistol, except that each attack fires a volley of 2 shots. Same maximum horizontal spread of 5.6 degrees too. And also the same refire check, where tapping your attack key will always fire 100% accurate shots. Since the chain gun always fires 2 shots at minimum, what happens if you only have one bullet left? The first shot processes normally, but the second shot is a bit weird. The game does check your ammo before firing a shot, but for whatever reason the check is done after playing the firing sound. So you'll hear two shots, but only the first shot will actually fire a bullet. Also, fun fact, the chain gun's firing sound is like the pistols, right? Yeah, but did you know there's a unique sound index for the chain gun in the code? It was the same as the pistol sound, but played at a higher pitch. It was never used though. The rocket launcher. One of the most powerful weapons in the game, but one wrong move and will toast you. Damage. 20 to 160 damage in multiples of 20. Rate of fire. 105 shots per minute. Range. Infinite. Ammo type. Rockets. Weapon slot. 5. The rocket launcher's damage is a bit difficult to determine. The impact damage is easy, but the added blast damage can be anywhere between 1 and 128. Or even more if a bug occurs, but that's for a different video. To keep it simple, let's say a direct rocket can deal between 140 and 280 damage. Unique to this weapon is a safety catch if you happen to hold down the trigger and switch to the rocket launcher. This safety catch prevents you from accidentally firing a rocket after switching and potentially blowing yourself up. You need to release your attack key first before being able to fire. You can also propel yourself using the rocket's explosion to gain massive horizontal speed. You can use this to rocket jump to places you're not supposed to reach. Keep in mind that in OG Doom, rockets provide zero vertical thrust. Speaking of rocket explosions, blast radius doesn't check for height differences. This can be used to take down enemies that are below you. Just shoot rockets against the wall and the enemies below you will all freaking die. Except spider demons and cyber demons, they are immune to blast damage. Our rocket travels at 700 map units per second and has a width and height of 22 and 8 map units respectively. Also, there's a piece of code that disallows collision with projectiles you've shot yourself. You can outrun your own rocket. And it will pass right through you. Spooky. The plasma rifle. Or gun. Whatever. It fires a stream of plasma and will frick everything up. Damage, 5 to 40 damage in multiples of 5. Rate of fire, 700 shots per minute. Range, infinite. Ammo type, cells. Weapon slot, 6. The plasma rifle has the highest rate of fire of any weapon in Doom, making it ideal to take down big groups of lower tier enemies and flinching heavier foes. Its muzzle flash will randomly alternate between two graphics and, unique to the plasma rifle, is a recoil animation that will last about half a second after done firing. A plasma bolt travels at 875 map units per second and has a width and height of 26 and 8 map units respectively. The big freaking gun 9000, the mother of all Doom guns. An absolute beast of a weapon that will help you throughout the hardest Doom levels ever made. It consumes 40 cells per shot. Damage 100 to 800 damage in multiples of 100. Rate of fire 53 shots per minute. Range infinite. Ammo type cells. Weapon slot 7. There's an entire video dedicated to how the BFG works because it can be a bit complicated, so I suggest you check that one out. In short, the BFG fires a green projectile. When it collides with something, 40 invisible traces are shot in a 45 degree cone emerging from the player's origin. The direction of the cone is the same as the direction the BFG ball was shot. So if the projectile was shot to the north, then so will the tracers. South, same for the tracers. West, and the player turns east, then still shot to the west. The range of a BFG tracer is 1024 map units, and each tracer deals between 49 and 87 damage. In theory, hitting all tracers, along with a max damage roll BFG ball, should deal 4280 damage. But because of how the RNG table is designed, it will never roll several max rolls in a row. The real max damage is more like 3503 damage. The minimum damage would be a single BFG tracer hitting with 49 damage. A BFG ball travels at 875 map units per second and has a width and height of 26 and 8 map units respectively. 
Yeah, the same as the plasma bolt. I know, it's weird. Just like the rocket launcher, the BFG has a safety catch where you must release the attack button first before firing. This was probably added so you don't accidentally waste 40 cells after switching weapons. If you're in a panicky situation and switch to the BFG, just make sure to tap your attack key like crazy to ensure the big green ball of death saves your life. It's hard to do a combat analysis when to use certain weapons. It really depends on the combination of foes you're facing, but also on the amount of ammo you have. Obviously killing two archers is easy when you've got the rocket launcher or a BFG, but what if the room is smaller? Then you can't use the rocket launcher. What if you only have enough cells for one BFG shot? Then you need to either try to take down both archers with a single shot, or kill just one and switch to a different weapon. The map layouts, different enemy combinations, ammo scarcity, and the player-owned weapons are all factors that will influence your decision-making skills. This is of course the beauty of Doom, and how one tiny modification to any of these four factors may completely change the way you approach a fight. In the blink of an eye, you need to be aware of the enemies you're facing, the weapons you carry, how much ammo you have, and be aware of the map layout and the items you can see. With this information you need to react quickly, prioritize tasks. Do you kill this enemy first because it's deadly? Or do you kill this group first because they're guarding an energy cell pack that is essential for taking down the deadlier foes? All these things you've got to process and turn into actions in less than a second. Being able to prioritize tasks on the fly and having outstanding situational awareness is what makes you a good Doom player. All I can say is, keep playing, keep practicing, get a feel for the weapons, become one with the gun, and of course, just don't die Lamal, and get good. And there we go folks, thank you very much for watching, and thank you to the patrons for the monthly support, and of course, shoutouts to 19day, Andrew Yukimchuk, Andri Dicklin, Art Cox, Basil, Bigs Make Me Coom, Beardman858, Bouncy Bob, Kappa Bitch, Cyprian Rusen, Joseph Schanz, Matthew Merican, Matthias Sippert, Aro Shi, Quay Gamer 62, Raven King, Ryan Quinn, Robert Wakeley, Sean Wang, Stephen Halustic, Super Cool Nata, Teko Kami, The Bell Tolls, Thomas, Timofey Olegovic Gerasimov, Turbine 2K5, Viktor Igmoe, Vintage Pink, and Vladimir J. Erkov. It's incredible how much support you guys provide. Words cannot express my gratitude. See you all next time.